What a great day to be in the house of the Lord. Matthew chapter 5, you can follow behind me on the wall if you'd like. I'm going to be reading verses 1 through uh, the first part of verse 12. So 5, 1 through 12. It says, And seeing the multitude, he went up on a mountain, and when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called son, the sons of God. Blessed are those who, who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. Now, dear God, bless the speaking of your word, I pray. God, thank you for this time of worship. Thank you for joining us here for the awesome presence of God that fills this place. Thank you for our worship team, our worship leaders, God, and how they pour their hearts out to you and really just lead us into a place, God, where we can connect with you. And God, that is my desire, that every time we come together, an atmosphere is created here that allows people to connect with the living God. Lord, even now, as I share your word, let the atmosphere of your presence only magnify that people will connect with you, God. Connect with this word. Lord, not hear my wisdom or my thoughts and ideas, but God, receive from you the engrafted words of the living God. So Holy Spirit, come and breathe the life of God on everything I'm going to say. God, I want your people to be blessed and to be made free and to receive heaven's reward. God, not in years and decades to come, but God, right now. Right now. Let heaven's reward become their gift right now, this day, in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you and praise you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Mario. I miss you, man. He's been over at South the last couple of weeks. Good to have you back. Yes. So today, as we continue the series, Thy Kingdom Come, understanding the kingdom of God. That's what this series is about, understanding the kingdom of God. I'm going to speak to you a message entitled Heaven on Earth, living daily in the blessings and will of the Lord. You know, when Jesus stepped onto the scene and began his earthly ministry, the people of God were not living according to the standards and principles of God, but they had slipped into a state of existence that very much resembled the world. Even the leaders of Israel had become corrupt and selfish in how they represented God as evidenced by the Lord's constant rebuke and his constant correction that was directed at the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the religious leaders and teachers of the day, especially concerning how they live their life. Listen, it is imperative, it is important that we understand that we know what God's word has to say. But unless how we live lines up with what he says, We're missing it. The first message delivered by Jesus to God's chosen people was repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. 
And that, 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 that phrase, that the, uh, repent, the, the verb uh, uh, is at hand, that phrase is at hand, it means the kingdom of heaven has come. Jesus was saying, listen, guys, repent. The kingdom of heaven has come. The kingdom of heaven has arrived. The kingdom of heaven is here. Yes. And this, this verb or this phrase suggests the inauguration of the reign of God on earth. The message of repentance preached by Jesus was the same message preached by John the Baptist. For those who follow Christ must turn away from self-centeredness, right. must turn away from self-control, yes. and must submit themselves to God's control and God's direction for their lives. If you're going to experience heaven on earth, You got to do it God's way. You got to do it God's way. In today's text, Jesus twice mentions the kingdom of heaven. Now, this series is a series on the kingdom of God. But in this particular text, and even in the first message he preached, Jesus did not talk about the kingdom of God, but he preached about the kingdom of heaven. Why did Jesus come preaching the kingdom of heaven instead of the kingdom of God? What's the relationship between God's kingdom that we talk about and preach about here on earth and the kingdom of heaven? When Jesus taught his disciples how to pray, he said in Matthew 6, verse 10, we're to pray for God's kingdom to come and for his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. So it also begs the question, what does it mean for God's kingdom to come to earth? I believe it's pretty simple. I believe it means the kingdom of heaven has manifested on earth. The kingdom of heaven has manifested on earth. The kingdom of God can be understood as the kingdom of heaven on earth. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When the kingdom of heaven invades your earthly existence, you experience the will of God in your life. When the kingdom of heaven invades your earthly existence, you experience heaven on earth because the kingdom of heaven has manifested in your midst. The kingdom of God has come to you. We can have heaven on earth. You can have heaven, heaven on earth when you repent of the things in your life that opposes the will of God and you allow the kingdom of God, his kingdom to come and his will to be done in your life. For where the kingdom of God is, the will of God will be also. I'm going to say that again. For where the kingdom of God is, the will of God will also be the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is a kingdom of power. The kingdom of heaven is the kingdom of authority. So when the kingdom of God comes, the power and authority of heaven has also come into your life. You got to get that. You got to believe that. If you don't believe nothing else, believe that when the kingdom of God comes, when it manifests in your midst, so also there is the power and authority Amen. of God. Hallelujah. Let me share with you a story about my friend Tim. 
Tim serves with me now on the Foursquare Board of Directors. But I first met Tim about three years ago in L.A. when he was in L.A. for meetings with, with another group. And that first meeting that I had with Tim, it just blew me away as he shared with me a series of events that challenged how he was living his life on earth as a citizen of heaven. He shared a series of events that he had walked through that challenged how he was living on earth as a citizen of heaven. I want Tim's story to serve as a reminder to you that as a citizen of heaven, as a citizen, a member of the kingdom of God, you can have on earth what is in heaven. What does heaven have that you're lacking? We're talking about heaven on earth. What did Jesus say? Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth in my life as it is in heaven. So what does heaven have that you're lacking? God wants his will in heaven to become your reality on earth. Do you hear me? He wants his will in heaven to become your reality on earth. Isn't that what Jesus taught us to pray? Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Do you believe that that is God's desire for you? That his kingdom would manifest in your life. That his will would be done right now, right here for you today. Not tomorrow, not next week. Listen, stop putting out the will of God in your life for some future time and decide, God, I'm going to step into your will right now. God, I'm going to live in your will right now. And I'm going to, I'm going to start that process by repenting of anything in my life that opposes your will. Stop putting out what God has promised you for some other day. That's how Christians live a defeated life. Do you believe that God wants his kingdom to manifest in your life? That he wants his will to be done right here, right now for you. And I was praying about this message. I believe God showed me he's going to break the spirit of oppression and depression today. I want you to agree with me right now. I want you to agree with me. God, listen, I believe God's going to do it today. Let's not put it off for tomorrow. Let's not say, God, please. No, no. God, deliver me right now. I don't think it's coincidental that Markham's leading a song today. If you only knew where he's been, oh, you would appreciate what he was saying so much more. When you stood in the trenches and you battled the forces of hell, and you see someone that is held by hell's grip, and you see the power of God begin to work. And you see that person set free of the grips of hell. And them stand up and say, I would have lost my mind, God, but you made a way. It's a game changer, church. We got to stop putting off what God has promised us for tomorrow. Listen, tomorrow I may not even live to see tomorrow. Why do I want to wait till tomorrow for what God has promised me today? I believe God said he's going to break the spirits of oppression, spirits of oppression and depression. Listen, 
There is no spirit of oppression in heaven. We're talking about heaven on earth. There is no spirit of depression in heaven. So why should we put up with it here? The kingdom of heaven has come as God's kingdom in our midst and we should have on earth what God has in heaven. You say, Pastor, you're, you're, you're being bold. I am being bold. <laughs> we should have on earth what God has in heaven. Jesus said, pray. Lord, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is Tim's heaven on earth story of kingdom dominion. A kingdom dominion that we all should walk in as citizens of God's kingdom. Pastor Tim said a teenage boy came over to spend the night with one of his sons. And upon arriving, the young man said that his family had been having a serious problem with bed bugs. Not knowing the boy had bed bugs on him, Tim and his wife thought it would be okay for the kid to stay. Maybe it was in his clothes he brought over. They thought it was okay for the kids to stay. Boy, were they wrong. For the young man transported bed bugs into their home, and in just a short time, they had a bed bug infestation. Tim said he contacted a pest control company, and he paid them $1,900 to come out and install very large heating units throughout their home to raise the temperature in the house to 140 degrees. That's, how you, that's one way you killed them, in order to kill these bugs. The company completed the treatment, and for a few weeks, things seemed like it was back to normal. However, it didn't take long for the bugs to resurface. So Tim did what we would have done. He called the company back and said, hey, the bugs are back. They said, I'm sorry, sir. We only offer a three-week warranty. And uh, you just exceeded that time limit. Pastor Tim said it got so bad that they would wake up covered with, bed, with bug bites. And he said this sticky, ooey, gooey fluid would be all over their bodies. Pretty disgusting, huh? I should have warned you, but I thought, nah, I don't want them. Just let them hear it. I don't want you to stop it yet. I don't want you to hear the story. So he called another pest control company. And they said they could come out and Treat for less money, but the only way their product will work is for them to spray their product directly on the bugs, which was an almost impossible task. So Tim felt like living with these pesky bugs was their faith. It got really bad. They did not have another $1,900 to spend. The option to spray seemed like a waste of money. And now the bugs were worse than before. The situation looked and felt hopeless. But it got worse. As they're dealing with the bug problem, Tim said they started hearing noises in the attic. So they went up and they discovered that some chipmunks had also decided they was going to move into their home. <laughs> so he put out traps, and in a, in a very short time, he, ca- he, he managed to catch 21 chipmunks. Oh, 21. That wasn't all of them, but he managed to catch that many. But that's not all. His wife also noticed mouse droppings in the cabinet drawers and in the various places throughout the kitchen. And when they thought it could not get any worse, guess what? It got worse. (laughs) Their home also became infested with ants. Pastor Tim and his family found themselves with a 
bed bug infestations, with chipmunks living in the attic, with mice in the house, and with a major ant problem, and they had little to no money to use to do anything about it to get rid of these pesky pests. So what do you do? You turn to God, right? That's what, you know, that's what we should do. We, you turn to God. <laughs> One night, Tim said he went outside to speak to God about the situation, seeking divine intervention. He said to the Lord, God, I need your help. I've got ants in my house. I've got mice in my house. I've got chipmunks in my attic. I've got bed bugs all over the place, and I don't know what to do. The Lord's reply to him was, I don't have a bed bug problem in heaven. Not sure he'd heard correctly. <laughs> he pleaded again, Lord, I need your help. Again, God said, I do not have a bed bug problem in heaven. I don't have an ant problem in heaven. I don't have a mite problem in heaven. I don't have chipmunks in the attic in heaven. I don't have that problem. Suddenly, Tim realized what God was saying. He said he went in his house. He got down on his knees to pray and give God thanks for who he was in Christ Jesus. You got to get that. See, it's not just about you knowing who God is. You must know who you are in Christ Jesus. He went to pray and give God thanks for who he was in Christ Jesus, that he was a citizen of the kingdom of God, a citizen of the, of the, of the kingdom of heaven. And Tim said, I made this pronouncement. I command every ant. I command every mouse. I command every chipmunk. I command every bed bug to get out of my house now or be cursed to death. Either you leave my house or you die at my command. That's bold, isn't it? Sometimes you got to get bold. He said in a matter of days, not weeks, but days, every ant, every mouse, every chipmunk, and every bed bug was gone and they never came back. And it did not cost him another $1,900. Tim, please hear me. Tim established on earth what was in heaven. Some of you, some of you are going to get this. You're going to get what I'm saying. He established on earth what was in heaven. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, God. Listen, if God does not have it in heaven, you don't have to have it here on earth. <laughs> Do you hear me? If God don't have it in heaven, you don't have to have it here on earth. And what God has in heaven, you can have on earth. Let the kingdom of heaven become the kingdom of God in your midst and you will have what God has. Back to our text. In Matthew 5, Jesus gives what is known as the Beatitudes. The word Beatitude means supreme blessedness. Supreme blessedness or a state of utmost bliss. Sounds a lot like heaven on earth, doesn't it? The Beatitudes describe a life 
are living conditions that are marked by the blessings and favor of God. They remind us that we can have a life that is blessed by God now, that the kingdom of heaven has become the kingdom of God on earth. Yes. The Beatitudes point to the fact that we do not have to wait until the sweet by and by to enjoy the benefits of heaven. The kingdom of God is now. The kingdom of heaven has become the kingdom of God in our midst now. It is among us today. And because God's kingdom is now, we can enjoy the blessings of heaven now. What is done in heaven can also be done on earth. The blessings that are in heaven can be your blessings on earth. The God who rules and reigns in heaven is the same God who rules and reigns the kingdom of God here on earth. The Beatitudes began this famous teaching of Jesus called the Sermon on the Mount. And he starts this sermon using words that seem to contradict themselves. But how many of you know that God's ways are usually in, t- in stark contrast to the ways of the world? Listen, if you're going to live for God you must be ready to say and do what seems strange to the world. If you're going to live for God, you must be ready to say and do what seems strange to the world. If you're going to live for God, you must be willing to give when others are taken. If you're going to live for God, you must be willing to give when others are taken. You must be willing to love when others are hating. You must be willing to help when others are abusing. God's, listen, God's ways are in stark contrast to the ways of the world. You must be willing to speak words of life when others are speaking death. Be willing to remain in hope when all hope according to the world's standards is gone. You must be an agent of peace when the situations are filled with turmoil. That is how the kingdom of God works. Not that the kingdom of God is backwards from the world, but the world is backwards from God's kingdom. But we've gotten more accustomed to the world's ways than we have God's ways. And we live, we live according to the edicts of the world and we think we're doing the right thing. There is absolutely nothing wrong with God's kingdom. Amen. But there is plenty wrong with the world and the systems of the world. Yeah. If you adopt the world's ways and standards instead of the things that define the kingdom of God, the blessings of heaven will evade you. Yeah. If you adopt the world's ways and the world's standards instead of the things that define the kingdom of God, the blessings of heaven will evade you. In the Beatitudes, Jesus gives traits that he's looking for in his followers. He identifies characteristics that describes people who are blessed by God. And each trait sounds like a direct contradiction of society's way of life. Listen, Jesus said the poor in spirit will possess the kingdom of heaven. The world teaches that pride and personal independence is the way to great gain. Jesus said, mourning brings comfort. The world teaches, pursue happiness at any and all cost. Jesus said, the meek will inherit the earth. The world teaches those with power are the one who gets. Jesus said, those who seeks the righteousness of God will be filled. The world teaches the pursuit of personal needs and fulfillment is the most important thing. Jesus said those who show mercy will receive mercy. The world teaches you be strong. Don't let your feelings get in the way of what you want and need. 
in life. Jesus said the pure in heart, the pure in heart, the pure in heart will see God. The world teaches that deception is acceptable. It's okay. Jesus said the peacemaker will be called sons of God. The world teaches personal peace is to be pursued without the concern of others. Jesus said the persecuted, the persecuted, means you got to go through some stuff, will inherit the kingdom of heaven. The persecuted. You got to be willing to go through some stuff. Will inherit the kingdom of heaven. The world teaches weak commitments. Make commitments, don't keep them. Make commitments, don't hold on to them. Just do what you want to do. You don't have to go through all this stuff to have what God had. No, no, no. Listen, you got to go through some stuff. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You got to go through some stuff. If you want what God has for you, you've got to go through some stuff. The Beatitudes are not, listen, they're not multiple choice for us, but we can allow, huh? Listen, they're not multiple choice. Well, we can pick what we like and leave the rest. Oh, I like this Beatitude here. I don't like that one, God. Persecute it. Listen, if you're going to inherit the kingdom of heaven, if the kingdom of heaven is going to become the kingdom of God in your midst, you must take Jesus' teachings as a whole. Because what he, what he taught describes what we should be like as Christ's followers. We have on earth, or we have heaven on earth, when we allow the kingdom of heaven to manifest as the kingdom of God in our midst. And what God has in heaven, you can have on earth when his kingdom come, when you allow his will to be done in and over your life. Thy kingdom come, God. Thy will be done in heaven as it is, in earth, as it is on, on earth as it is in heaven. So will you let God's kingdom come to you now? Jesus said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It is here. But for you to receive it, you must let God's kingdom become your reality. Can you have heaven on earth? Absolutely. It is God's desire for each and every one of us that we walk in dominion and power. 